We present I'll Never Forget by Nigel Banks, read by Jane Pulford, Patrick O'Connor, and Jim Newbury. I'm afraid you'll find him much changed since you last saw him. Well, will he even know who I am? It depends. On what? His mood. Sometimes he's communicative, chatty even, though he does ramble on. Stuff from the past, which might mean something to you. At other times, it's like he's taken a vow of silence, won't bother to make a sound. Those moods can last for days, and then suddenly he'll snap out of it and become the epitome of charm. His memory's very patchy as well. He'll suddenly recall some small detail from years ago, and then the next day it's gone. The slate's been wiped clean. Right. How, how long's he been here? Oh, it'll be um, over a month now. His son David made all the arrangements. Now, I've been abroad for a while. I, I only just got back, so it's been a bit of a shock. He was fine when I last saw him. Yes, well, a sudden decline is quite common, especially with folk his age. But he was always so strong, physically and mentally. Ray's a sharp memory. He ran a half marathon a couple of years ago. I know. It's actually far tougher for friends or relatives who come to see him than it is for him. He's comfortable. He's eating well. He's not in any pain. Well, apart from the inevitable aches that someone of his age suffers. Well, that's something, I suppose. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me before I take you through to him? Uh, well, what's the form from now on? I don't have any personal experience of this kind of situation. Both our parents died young, well before any sort of institutional care was needed. You don't need to worry. We'll look after him. For as long as it's necessary. Well, what about the cost? I bet your services don't come cheap. I don't have a massive amount of savings. I can't be expected to fund his care. It's not a problem. David has put his house up for sale and the proceeds should be more than adequate to pay for his care until... For as long as he needs it. You should probably have a chat with David and he'll talk you through all the financial details. I was afraid you might say that. <laughs> we don't exactly get along, my nephew David and me. It's a long story. Family, feud and all that. I won't bore you with the details. We haven't communicated for years. I suppose I'll have to bite the bullet. Well, that's up to you. I'll take you along to his room now, if that's all right. What was that actor's name? Jim? Toby? Terry? Oh, this is so annoying. He was in that film. Oh, God, I can't even remember the title of it now. Uh, about that lad in Borstal who's a good cross-country runner. British film. In black and white, made in the 60s. Tom! Yes, that's it. I'm sure his name was Tom. Tom... What? Finney! Yes, Tom Finney. How could I forget that name? Tom Finney. <laughs> now, wait a minute, that's not right. He was a footballer, played for Preston North End in England. One of the greats, along with Stanley Matthews and Nat Lofthouse. Oh, pray let me not be mad. What's that from? King Lear. Well, at least I can remember that. They say it often helps. If you can't remember something, think of other things, anything but what you're struggling to recall, and then it'll suddenly pop into your head a bit later, take you by surprise. So, what shall I think about? Lines from Shakespeare. So I seem to be okay with that at the moment. To be or not to be, that is the question. Hamlet, obviously. Is this a dagger I see before me? The Scottish play. We are such stuff as dreams are made on. A Midsummer Night's Dream? No, that's not right. Albert! Albert Finney! That was his name. Of course, how could I forget that? Thank God for that. Hang on. No, he wasn't in that film about the runner. He was in Saturday night and Sunday morning. I remember going to see that at the Roxy. 
I was underage, but I managed to bluff my way past the woman at the ticket kiosk. <laughs> so, what was, so what was that other actor's name? I'm just going round in circles here. Andrew, you've got a visitor. Someone to see you. Hello, Andy. Long time no see. How are you? Who's this? He must know me well, because he called me Andy. Andy's holding my hand. Either that or he's a god-botherer. They're always doing that, Vickers. They think just because they're wearing a dog collar, they can take liberties. But this chap's not wearing one. Some of them are sneaky, those, these days. They come in plain clothes, undercover agents. Maybe he's one of those. He looks vaguely familiar, though. I'm pretty sure I've met him before somewhere. Do I know you? It's Tom, your brother Tom. Tom Courtney! No, Tom Wilkins, your younger brother. It's been a while since we last saw each other. I've been working abroad. Tom Courtney, the loneliness of the long-distance runner. That's the film I was trying to remember. <laughs> Seeing you has brought it all back to me. I couldn't for the life of me remember his name. I thought it was Albert Finney, but he was in Saturday night and Sunday morning. Yeah, that's right. But, but some years later, they were both in that film called The Dresser. We saw it together. Did we? Oh, yeah, don't you remember? I was down from college for the summer vacation, and we went to see an early evening showing of it at the Roxy. Alice had taken young David to visit her parents, so you were at a loose end. I don't remember that. You must be able to remember something of that evening. We would talk about it for years afterwards. There was that scene in the film where Albert Finney is playing the, the failing Shakespearean actor-manager and Tom Courtney plays his faithful dresser. The company are touring different theatres around the country and it's not going well. They're catching a train to the next venue and they're going to miss it. So Albert Finney uses his actor's voice to stop the train as it's pulling out of the station. And we both thought how unrealistic that was. But it didn't matter because it was such a good scene. Fish and chips. What? Huh? We went and bought fish and chips afterwards, as a special treat. That's right, we did. And the top came off the vinegar bottle and drenched my chips. I couldn't eat them, so you gave me some of yours. <laughs> I did in all. Oh, that was a good evening. We had a few pints of the feathers afterwards. I'll leave you to it. Come and find me before you go. Of course, and, and thanks. So, Andy, it's lovely to see you. You're looking great. Uh, they, they treating you well in here? What did you say your name was? It's Tom, your brother Tom. You don't look like him. He's got black curly hair. Oh, yes, I did have, once upon a time. I've been pretty well bald for years. I took after Dad, whereas you inherited Mum's hair. But you went grey in your thirties, don't you remember? Oh, yes, she had a wonderful head of hair, did Mum. She used to let me brush it for her when I was a nipper. It was so thick and lustrous, I could hardly get a brush through it. Well, I don't remember that, but then that would be before I was born. I do remember you spending ages in front of a mirror in your teddy boy's outfit, preening yourself, getting your DA quiff just right with lashings of Brill Cream. <laughs> Dad used to call you a right Nancy boy. It wasn't Brill Cream. What? I always used Silver Cream. It was less greasy. Mum used to make a fuss about having to wash and starch the doilies after I'd been sitting on the sofa in the best room. Oh, yeah. God, doilies. I haven't heard that word in a long time. What did you say your name was again? It's Tom. Tom Courtney? No, Tom Wilkins, your brother. Oh, yes. You'll have to excuse me. My memory's not so good these days. So how did you find him? Oh, up and down. It was a big shock at first to see the change in him. He looks so shrunken now. But we managed to have a conversation, of sorts. It's funny, he could remember certain details from the past that I'd totally forgotten. But he kept forgetting who I was. I know. The human memory's a strange thing. And as we age, its decline is unpredictable and varies from person to person. I'm afraid the likelihood is that he'll have no recollection of this visit when you next come. 
So it'd be like Groundhog Day every time I come. I'm afraid so. Oh, well, at least I know what to expect. But I'll come back next week if that's convenient. Of course. Whenever you like. He's not going anywhere. Well, not just yet, we hope. Oh, sorry, that may have sounded a bit flippant. Occupational hazard, I'm afraid, when you spend so much of your time around the elderly. No, I don't blame you. I couldn't do your job. Not if they paid me a king's ransom. Uh, look, I'll get in touch with my nephew, David, and, and, and tell him I've visited. Maybe clear the air a bit. Now's as good a time as any to mend a few fences, I suppose. Good idea. I'll show you out. Fish and chips. And we had a few pints at the fitters. What a good night that was. I'll never forget it. Huh, just thinking about it, it's made me a bit peckish. I wonder what's for tea. All short stories were edited and compiled by Robert Burgess. And this was an old Dolly production. <laughs>